Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. We're answering questions we receive from you, our viewers. If you have a question, visit our website, quranspeaks.com. Dr. Shabir, here is a question. Is punishment in hell eternal or finite? So this is a question that um, is, is very uh, seldom discussed uh, by Muslim scholars, but uh, it's a very important question. Uh, Why some, do you think it's important? Well, uh, f for some people, it's, um, and, and I, I live with this for many years, uh, you know, the simplistic view is, that, okay, uh, you do good, you go to paradise, and that is forever. You do bad, you go to hellfire, and that's, you're going to be punished there forever and ever. And, and it's a no-brainer, you just do good, you go to paradise, right? Um, it, so it, it helps to think that, that hell is going to be forever. If you think that, okay, well, you know, eventually you'll be out of there, uh, you might be more inclined to try a sin because you're thinking, okay, it can't be that bad because <laughs> it's gonna, not going to be forever. Mm -hmm. uh, though we, we always emphasize that the punishments we're talking about in hell, these are very severe and nobody wants to be in there for a moment. So, you know, don't take sins lightly. Uh, but, but now, if we, if we uh, take this simplistic view, um, like some people are motivated by that simplistic view, uh, do good, go to paradise forever, do bad, go to hell forever, no-brainer, do good. But some people are thinking uh, from a philosophical point of view, and they're, they're looking at that and they're saying, okay, what does that mean for God? Like, uh, your image of God is somebody who has this thing called hell, and he's going to put people in there, and he's going to watch them uh, burn forever and ever and ever and ever. Um, so, like, what does that mean for God? Um, and then you say that God is kind and merciful. So uh, how is this kindness and mercy being expressed in that situation? So, so this calls for an answer. And uh, in dealing with this question, I found that uh, it, there, there are many reasons for thinking that uh, the, um, to, to say that, that hell is forever is not a good idea. And um, I was relieved to find that uh, there are uh, some Muslim scholars in our history, some important scholars who actually said that hell will not be forever. Uh, most notable in this regard is Ibn al-Qayyim al, al jawziyyah He was uh, a famous student of Ibn Taymiyyah, who is uh, widely regarded by many as uh, Sheikh al-Islam. Uh, this is a title that he has been uh, awarded uh, by, by, by the populace, um, the scholar of Islam. Not, not just a scholar, but, you know, a scholar the of scholar. scholars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, of course, uh, he was uh, well known for many of his writings, large collections of uh, fatawas or verdicts that he has given, you know, just his collection of fatawas, like is this wide on, on a bookshelf, mm -hmm. uh, filling, filling an entire shelf. Uh, his student, Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyyah, is also quite accomplished and very well uh, respected. He wrote a book called Hadi al Arwah ila Bilad al Afrah. Uh, the, uh, the guide uh, for the souls to the, to the lands of happiness. In that book, he, he addresses the question as to whether paradise and hell uh, will remain forever. And he gives uh, the various views of uh, Muslim scholars about this. So um, when it comes to hell in particular, uh, he um, adopts the position uh, and he says that this was the position of his teacher as well that uh, hell will not be for uh, forever. And um, how does he arrive at this? Well, uh, he first gives the arguments of those who say that it will be forever. And then he rebuts those arguments by giving counter arguments. And then he gives some 25 uh, points to show the difference between paradise and hell on this question. Mm -hmm. So paradise has to be forever, but hell, no, not forever, because there's a difference between the two. So. Uh, what are the main points that others will use to say that hell is forever? Well, uh, a big trump card for them is that uh, there are passages in the Quran that say that people will go to hell and they will, you know, Khalidina fiha, they mm -hmm. will be in hell forever. And like Khalidin means they will like kind of reside there. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. like it Stay seems there. to be like a non ending. Mm -hmm. um, and there's even the mention of Abada sometimes, you know, like they will be in there forever. Mm -hmm. uh, so this seems so very clear and literal. But uh, Ibn al-Qayyim's answer to that is that yes, but within the context, like when we say that something is going to be forever, 
but we mean forever. Like somebody saying, this thing is taking forever. No, we, we know within the context, it doesn't mean forever in, in the philosophical sense. It just means it's taking too long, right? Hmm. Somebody says, this is taking forever. Like it's taking forever to download this movie, <laughs> right? And we know it's yeah. going to be only a few few minutes, but somebody says it's taking forever. They mean few minutes. But do you think God would use language so imprecisely? Well, it, but, but Ibn Qayyim's point precisely is that, um, you know, lang language is used like within a certain context. So when it is known, uh, when there are good reasons for thinking that hell will be uh, temporary, mm -hmm. uh, when it says that the people will be thrown into hell and they will remain therein, uh, it means for the duration of hell. Mm -hmm. So as long as hell remains, but if God uh, extinguishes hell, uh, like he, he, he brings it to nothing, mm -hmm. then the hell does not remain. But as long as it remains, people will remain therein. So for example, a paradise, this is the expression of God's mercy. And according to Ibn al-Qayyim, uh, God's mercy is something like inherent in God. This is uh, um, it's not due to anything external to him. This is just how God is. But God's anger is, is not so much inherent in God. It is due to some something else that is outside of God is due to the uh, sins of people. So God's anger is expressed in as hell. And, and it is the sins of people who cause the hell to be expressed. Otherwise, there's nothing in God that says I have to have a hell. Um, so uh, the, the hell then will be that expression of God's uh, anger dealing with the sin. Uh, but uh, that uh, the, the mercy overpowers the anger according to a well-known hadith. Mm -hmm. And um, even the Quranic statement about this says that, you know, God's mercy is overpowering. So uh, the, the, uh, from this perspective, it is easy co to conceive that the paradise will remain forever, but the hell uh, is, is not going to remain forever. It's going to be there for a certain cause. Now, uh, the, is, is, what God does is for a certain purpose, for good purposes. And uh, the paradise is for the good purpose of uh, expressing uh, the, the mercy of God to people. A hell is for the good purpose of showing the anger of God, but the anger of God is not going to like be forever. Like God is not going to be forever angry because some people sin in this world, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we already understand this in a general way because believers uh, say, m Muslims widely accept that uh, if a Muslim happens to fall into hell due to our sins, uh, for which God does not forgive us, and we do ask for his forgiveness, but certainly we need that. But let's say people sin and God does not forgive them, either be because they didn't ask for forgiveness or, you know, or for whatever reason. So uh, then their punishment in hell will be only temporary. This is believers we're talking about now. There's wide agreement on this, that the believers will eventually be taken out from hell and they'll be put into paradise. So uh, those who want to insist that hell will be forever, they say that the non-believers will remain there and to perish forever. Um, but now we can understand from the idea that the believers will be taken out uh, that the purpose for which they were put into hell is fulfilled. That, that, that hell becomes a kind of purification place. They say almost it's like, you know, some metals have to be put into fire in order to purify the metal. Mm -hmm. uh, so when the metal is purified, it's taken out of the fire. So the believer will be put in there to be purified of his or her sins, taken out of hell, put into paradise. So the hell serves as a purification. Now, what about the non-Muslims? So uh, the, the non-believers, uh, and, and non-Muslim is not here not the right term because I don't want to give the impression that non-Muslim automatically go to hell. Mm -hmm. But let's say the rebellious, ingrate person who has opposed God, and, and that person is now in hell. So what purpose will it serve for God to keep this person in hell forever? It's not going to serve any purpose. So when it has served the purpose of either purifying people who can be purified uh, or expressing the anger of God uh, until that subsides, uh, then uh, there is no need for the hell to remain and God will cause it to come to nothing. Mm -hmm. So these are that, mostly like arguments from reason, right? They're not, they're not from the plain reading text of the Quran. So how have other scholars viewed Ibn Qayyim's arguments? Well, generally, this this position is not uh, being highlighted. Okay. Uh, I remember mentioning this in a conference where there were uh, scholars who are of the traditional bent who will tend to take things literally. And um, 
Um, I, uh, I, I clearly mentioned that this is uh, a minority position. It's not a majority position. Most scholars have not arrived at this same position. Okay. So it is, uh, you can say it's a minority view. Um, but it is a view that was held by some important scholars, such as Ibn al-Qayyim al, al Uh So the, the moderator was uh, careful to uh, say after my speech, he did say that this was a minority view. <laughs> <laughs> so to let everyone know, don't follow this minority view, just stick with the majority view. Of course, people feel more comfortable following a majority view because the majority view for them, you know, seems to be backed by many scholars and the many cannot be wrong. Perhaps the one person or a few persons are, are wrong. But I mentioned this minority view because there are people out there who are thinking philosophically. And um, for them, it's not going to make sense. And it's not, they're not going to find God attractive if you tell them that, that God has this place that he's gonna, uh, in which he's going to torture people forever and, and ever. So the idea that the hell is temporary is more uh, compatible with the, with the view that God is merciful and kind and, and you know, full of clemency and compassion for human beings. Thank you for that, Dr. Shabir. You're welcome. You can change someone's life this Ramadan. Donate as much or as little as you can and be part of our project to share the message of Islam to people across the globe. Visit QuranSpeaks.com and donate. Your contribution is zakat eligible and tax deductible. May God keep you safe and healthy. May God bless you and your loved ones with the very best always.